Before we start talking about classes and objects, let's talk about methods first. So what is a method? A method is like a sub-program or a, a small program inside of a program. We can uh, write a sequence of statements and then give that sequence a name. We can then execute the sequence at any time by referring to its name. So before we move on, in many programming languages, they are usually referred to as functions, but in Java, we usually call them methods. So it's pretty general programming concepts. Methods can be used to reduce code duplication and make programs more easily understood and maintained. When the method is used in a program, we say the method is called or invoked. And finally, methods can have parameters to pass information to the method and also can return information back to invoking class. So static methods in Java. So uh, some of the things we're going to discuss uh, here will be a little bit hard to understand, but it will, they will be more clearer later on. So if you apply static keyword with any method, it is known as a static method. A static method belongs to the class rather than an object of a class. Static methods can be invoked without the, the need for creating an instance of a class. And static methods can access static data member and can, can change the value of it. Okay, here's an example of a method in Java. So we have a class called language. And uh, what we have seen so far is that after a class declaration, we usually uh, define our main method, but not in this case. So now we're gonna define a static void method called display. This method will print Java is my favorite programming language, and that's the end of the method. We can then define our main method where we can actually call or invoke this, the display method. And this is how it's done. So let's see some examples. We'll go over some, some general examples, but before we start, uh, just a reminder, I would like to uh, show you where I am working in my computer with present working directory command. So I'm under either in my desktop and in the desktop I have a folder called CIS36. So to see the content of this folder, I can use the ls command. I can see that I have lecture one, two, three, and uh, four and five, which today I'm going to use the uh, lecture five folder. So cd lecture five so do another ls as you can see i've got nothing in here but uh this is where i'm going to work today so as you can see you can see them visually here as well all right so let's save our first empty uh file as i have to re uh direct to lecture five i'm going to call this method demo java and class method demo okay so as as we as we see in the previous example so it is a good idea to define the methods before the main method because main method is where we're going to use them so let's create our first static and why we're, we're calling the static is will be a lot more clearer but right now Let's just use it like this. So I'm gonna call this static void and the name of my uh, method could be message. You can really name anything you want. So what do I want this, me uh, this method to do? I can say print, then I can write something like this is my first Java method. Okay, as simple as that. So what can I do about this? I can call this method, the message method inside my main, right? So main, main method is where, what, where is our entry point to the program always. So I can call method by calling its name, method with a set of uh, parentheses and followed by a semicolon. So that's how we could do. So let's, let's test this called java c 
method demo that Java looks one error so apps uh, completely made an error here so the name of this is message right okay all right one more time looks good as you can see I've got my method demo dot class I can actually call this here you go so this is my first Java method so and then one thing one good thing about creating methods is that you can actually uh, reuse right so we can call message again and recompile run see the, the same method was invoked or was called twice in this class okay this is a simple example to a method So next, we can create other methods that could do other things. Let's do one more example. Static void. Let's name this method uh, square of two. Square of two. So by the name suggests this method will should print the square of two on the screen. So how can we do that? We can say pl, and we can say the uh, maybe just say square of two is four just something like this of course this is not the best way to do but just this is just a step so we can call this method square of two and what will it will do is it will print square of two is four right so of course um writing a function that only calculates the square of two is not a good idea maybe we can uh, do it another way we can have a general square function static void square so this function can take a parameter as we discussed earlier so what kind of it can take an integer parameter let's call this um, an x and what we should do is we can print and then we can say square of whatever the x value is and we can say space is space plus um, x times x or you can define a, a, a variable here that calculates square of x and then prints this but this is this is also good because I'm really using this to get to somewhere. So one more. Here we go. Now that looks good. So instead of having a square of two function, we can just have a square that can take any value basically and then return uh, print the square. So how would that work? Let's see. Uh, okay, of course, we haven't called this. So I can say just a regular square function. And this time I can put four and then I mean passing when I call this I'm passing four to x so x becomes uh, x takes the value of four when we call this and it will print x and it will print x times x did I save this uh, let's see one way to find out so square of four is 16 so it looks like our function is working perfectly except that uh, we could add one more thing to this we can have this uh, function return the value instead of printing it maybe we're going to use it in another expression maybe we want to print it on our own uh, so how can we do that we can uh, give this a uh, maybe uh, let's call this old i still want to keep it there uh, but I'm gonna redefine this so uh, I just wanna I do not want to delete this we can uh, compare it so again I have a static this time I'm gonna uh, this this define an integer as a return instead of void void basically means that this method will not return anything so when you call this don't expect anything back um, so our first three methods that we define all um, or void so none of them return anything but this time I'm expecting a return 
uh, integer. So, uh, so this function that is called square, uh, oh, again, we'll take an integer x. You can also use double, but for simplicity, I'm gonna use integer. So when a function a signature has a uh, return type that is integer, it also means that we have to use the uh, return keyword followed by an integer value. So this time I can say this will return x times x. Right, so I could still use it like this. Uh, let's see what happens. Uh, okay, so it looks like it worked except that it actually didn't print it. The reason for that is that this function is responsible to return the value to right here. So what we're going to do with that value, it depends on us. So we, we decide not to do anything with this, but normally here's what we could do. We have two options. We can use it in a print statement, just to say uh, square five. What we'll do is we'll return 25 here, so we can print 25. Uh, Here we go. So we printed 25. So this is one way to use it. Another way to use is, let's say we have an integer a that's three and integer b that's four and say integer a and b are sides of a, a right triangle. Um, and we're trying to calculate the length of the hypotenuse. Okay, how can we do that? We can say an integer c is of course we need to use a math square root for this so math dot square root function so inside this we can say uh, square of a plus square of b so what will happen when we call a uh, square a it will pass a the value not a itself will we'll pass the value of a as 3 and it will pass it to x and then the, uh, x will represent 3 it will return 3 times 3 9 here then we're going to invoke this and this case will pass 4 to x and will return 4 times 4 as 16 back and then we will do 9 plus 16 and then we pass it to meta square root, which will return 5.0. So then I can say PL, I can just print C for simplicity. Uh, okay, we have one problem. Uh, incompatible types, conversion from double to int. Yeah, that's right. So, uh, math dot square root will return not an integer, uh, but a double we have two options we can either convert this to a double or we can typecast it I, I think this is this is a much simpler way so one more time that's all right to to have errors in your program as long as you know how to fix them so yeah so 5.0 okay so what we learned so far is we learn how to write a simple method uh, that only prints something that doesn't return anything and we also learn uh, to define a method that not only that it returns something, it also actually uses a parameter. We can define a method. Let's call let's, this method should return again an integer, and this method should call sum, which will take uh, not one but two parameters: integer x and integer y, and they should return. Um, x plus y so okay how do how we can call this function we can call this with uh, the simplest way is to call it inside a print statement so you can actually print the, uh, the the return so what we can do we can call sum and pass basically uh, uh, two arguments so these are x and y are called uh, parameters three and five are called arguments 
to pass the arguments to the uh, uh, parameters respectively. There you go. So, and we pass three and five, we got eight return as the sum and we will print the sum. Okay, so this is uh, a few uh, method examples. The idea was to uh, introduce the simple methods in Java before we learn classes and objects.